Good morning, folks. 1998 QE2 has a binary partner, a tiny moon. This will be very, very far out past our moon as it passes today, but high-scale scope operators will have no problems catching a glimpse. Grail mission, claiming lunar gravity is non-homogeneous due to massive concentrations of matter underground. Wonder if that applies to Earth. Latest drought update, slightly less coverage than last week due to the storms, but there are still many areas in a major drought. I do love my country, but I admit Europe has the right idea here. Unless you are starving, it's best to avoid GMO. Got one buoy in event mode. It's that same Alaskan system showing 40 to 45 meter swings. It's tough to understand how a 120 foot wave is missed by other boats, other buoys, or anyone on the coastline. So I usually consider these events to be anomalous or just taken at face value. No major quaking in the last 24 hours. Anything above 4 in the Caribbean is noteworthy, however, and the USGS is missing a few North Atlantic quakes like this 4.4 south of Iceland. Also got rumbling underneath our feet at the Pacaya volcano in Guatemala. I have linked this full video for you below. It's somewhat lower quality, but he really made it work. Got some great shots. In East Asia, the storms go ham. Roofs, gone. Crops, flooded. Travel standstills and more on the way. Hurricane Barbara weakening and hopefully not skipping over land into the Gulf. Southeastern Australia is in the storm zone tonight. While the same story holds true for the Indian subcontinent and the Bay of Bengal coastal area. Torrential rain and flooding are spreading in Central Europe. Just look at the moisture loop and see how it's funneled north of Africa. Last night's U.S. convergence was a beast. Dropped tornadoes across wide areas, but was just plain nasty everywhere. The counterclockwise drive to this low is one of the best we've seen on the wind map, where the convergence lies swinging southward and will shift east tonight after stalling for two days in the central states, and I can't stress enough how dangerous this will get tonight. Bartol showing a rise in neutrons and muons, higher than the last few weeks, but still not really of concern. Flaring is only slightly less pitiful than the sunspots, so I'll go right to the solar wind. We're back at ambient quiet now as we've come under 400 kilometers per second. It's nudged up the density just a bit. Our magnetic shield is reacclimating himself to nap time, not letting much through in terms of radiation either. Inductions are very soft with virtually no baseline resonance. The electron storm is continuing, but maybe not for long. You also notice GOES-13 readings back online here. And if you'll remember, it is often the come down from energetic flux and radiation storms that kicks off a quake watch. And we sure got one. I officially began it last night when I realized that I had majorly underjudged the primary coronal hole factor. I thought it was just a blip, isolated center disk. Uh, whoops. That's a powerful extension northeast and even further up to the limb where you can see more coronal darkness. Coming to the gong, not sure how I missed this. The green clearly extends up to the left like we saw on the SDO. Let's come in closer to see umbral fields nearer to the surface. It's clear as day here. This is one large coronal opening. It was going to be a 48 hour minor watch, but with the energetic flux just now descending, coronal hole lasting for a while, and its solar wind stream only two days away, that's a major watch as I leave you with filaments on the disc, and some that ended up not so much on the disc. Eyes open, no fear, it's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.